we're getting out of here. I want to hit hook up just in case. That fire pit was underwater. That was underwater. Right? So that, that, you ever been so wet and cold you want to cry? What's up, fellow journeyers? We are, um, we're getting out of here. I'm sure you can look around this campground and quickly tell this is not somewhere you want to be if there's a lot of rain. <laughs> they actually walked around and talked to us and said, look, if there's three to six inches of rain, this whole thing could flood. So we're like, okay. We're out of here. <laughs> running from the rain, running from the wind, technically heading south, probably toward more wind and rain, but hopefully at least not in a flood area. The third thing, we're crossing the Chesapeake Bay, the bridge and the tunnel. And I don't know if you've heard about this tunnel, but this is one of the most freaky bridge tunnel combos you'll have. So our friend Mary is an incredible cook. She says she has this recipe for sourdough cinnamon rolls with bacon on top. Yeah, we're all trying to outrun the storm, but priorities, we said, okay, first cinnamon rolls, then we'll outrun the storm together. So we gotta get fueled up first. I have the coffee. Okay. This is sugar free, right? Yep. Totally sugar free. <laughs> the glycemic value is very low in this. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's incredible. I got the gooey middle piece. This is a game of tactics. <laughs> Are you we kidding me? You two really matching again? So lots of things that are stressful today. I mentioned a couple as far as the wind and the tunnels. And well, this road honestly stresses me too. This is basically a one lane road um, that I'm just hoping I don't encounter another large rig on because I honestly don't know what we would do. So we have the Chesapeake Bay Bridge and Tunnel and all that going on, but the bridge, just the other day, we went across it with Stuart and Lindsay to go to REI, and they wouldn't let Stuart go across. And I didn't think it even felt that windy. So my concern is we may show up today and they'll say, oh, nah, you can't cross, it's too windy. We checked the weather, looked at the wind restriction restrictions, we gave them a call, so we're hoping. We've done everything. Everything in our power. <laughs> we should to be good to go. Across that bridge. <laughs> I do not want to have to backtrack. It'll, it'll be a long, long day if we have to backtrack on this bridge. We were going to be going to the Outer Banks. We, we were no doing some beach camping. Beach camping with yeah. no hookups. Dry camping. Dry yeah. camping for like six, seven nights. It does not sound like a good time. We've done that before, <laughs> and we were in North Dakota in Theodore Roosevelt National Park. That was only like three nights. No, it? it was a week. week a week horrible. of rain and no hookups. <laughs> a little nervous and we we're trying to beat some of the high winds so we wanted to to get over this bridge so we didn't get stuck on the other side with having to go all the way around because it is a concern they do shut this down for high winds but i am excited for this bridge i love bridges i know i've expressed my love for bridges and this is definitely a man-made wonder. I have seen pictures of this bridge where it literally disappears underwater. You go in a tunnel and then you come back out. I mean, look at this. This is incredible. Here we go, JJ. Okay, go in the tunnel. You ready? minutes oh my goodness gracious look at my cab oh wow i'm about to pee my pants 
If you ever wonder what I could do, oh my goodness. I could take that with the truck. I don't know if I could take that with the, I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna back in on this side and at least get off to the side and you're just gonna pull in straight and then figure it out when I get out. I'll pull it next to you and then once you pull out, then I'll. All right, I'm gonna get in this side a little bit. Marissa saw a Chick-fil-A. That was more nerve wracking than the tunnel. So my Chick-fil-A habit gets us in big trouble sometimes because I was literally like researching where we're gonna go for lunch and if I don't plan it out ahead of time, we were so focused on the bridge that I didn't plan out our lunch stop and then the kids are like, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, they're ready to eat. And I saw a Chick-fil-A and we made like a last minute decision. Oh, here's a parking lot. Let's go get Chick-fil-A. I should have planned this out. Ah! Win. The kids are chanting Chick-fil-A. Chick oh my goodness. <laughs> Why'd you have to take the whole parking lot? At least I tried. <laughs> down myself you want to get down yourself okay wow somebody's becoming a big boy there it is right over there we just need a boondock here look at all these choices <laughs> fat burger some sushi mo's which which somebody could stay here and order the pizza somebody get chick-fil-a and bring it back oh. comfort food <laughs> yep we did both that and you, they, they started putting these bees in here because before they didn't and that's why that was like good to go good to go all right thank you traveling tech <laughs> Let's see what this thing can do here i don't think he's gonna make that you think he's gonna make that i don't think he has a choice <laughs> oh oh look at that turn wow that was like a 92 degree turn that's where the pro ride is amazing wow so we got around 24 mile per hour winds today. We got very lucky because we've had a tailwind the whole way. So if anything, I'm getting like over 14 miles to the gallon today. Because we're being pushed. Yeah, we're being pushed. You know, we have driven this in 20, 25. Really don't want to do it 30 mile per hour winds if possible. So like, honestly, like if I was going to rank all the different RVs we've had, we've had a lot of different RVs. We had an earthbound Telluride for a few months. We had a 43 foot fifth wheel for a few months. I'm just going to rule those out. But let's say we had the motor home for what, two years? We yeah. had the Airstream for three years. The open range, fifth wheel around this size. Year what, and a half. Year and a half. North Carolina. Hey, we're North Carolina. Hey, welcome to North Carolina. Uh, I'm going to throw in the mix also. We rented the Class C to take to California, and then we've got the Solitude behind us. So the Solitude and the open range fifth wheels tow about the same because we had the same truck with that. So I'll put them in order of what I've towed in high winds, like easiest to toughest, like as far as me being worn out or stressed. I would say the most stressful out of all those. Which one do you think is the most stressful? Class C. The Class C. <laughs> you wouldn't think so. That Class C was pushed around by the wind. It was pushed around by the semis. I don't know if it just didn't have enough weight or what. And, and a lot of it was it the was roads were- It was the most were, surprising. That, and you probably wouldn't expect that out of those. But the Class C, I was the most worn out when we got done driving the Class C up anything. I felt like I was wrestling a bull the whole time. Uh, what do you think second? The motorhome? Wow. Okay. She knows because she's seen the No, I've <laughs> driven them as well. <laughs> she has. She's driven both the, all these as well. So I'm putting in an order of what I think. I mean, Nathan does more of the driving and more of the, especially if the weather's not great, but I've driven all of them and that's the order I would put them in. So the motorhome, same as the Class C. It was a gas, but it was a new mar. It was pretty heavy, but we still got pushed around some. It still shook a little bit. It's like riding a, maybe a, a less volatile bull at the end of the day <laughs> than the Class C. Uh, third, what do you think would be third? Over the Airstream and the fifth wheel? Yeah. So the I think- The Airstream? Because, because we're talking about wind and towing in the wind, I would say third would be the Airstream was the toughest because we did get pulled around some of the Airstream because it's a trailer and we didn't have, Stuart's got the Hensley hitch. I'm just gonna say this. Those things are expensive. Those things are heavy. But everybody has the Pro Pride and the Hensley Hitch for their travel trailer. Say so they have no issues. So we love it so much we even named our daughter after the Hensley yes, Hitch. Yes, not true. <laughs> like, no, that's my maiden name, but I love giving Hensley a hard time and telling her she's named after a hitch. 
<laughs> if you're driving in wind, we're not talking about whipping into places, small campgrounds, state parks, all that stuff. As far as drivability and how tired I am at the end of the day, I'm going to say the Airstream was the third worst. And the easiest out of all those, and part of this is because we have a dually, a dually with a fifth wheel. Out of all those, I feel like I'm in the most control. I tell the fifth wheel what to do. The few times I have felt it maybe move, it's like, it's like the truck just like, nope, nope, this is what you're going to do. Whereas in the van and the Airstream, there's a couple of times where I was like, am I wagging the tail or is the tail wagging the dog? I mean, we got it back under control with some brakes and stuff, but we felt a little bit a couple of times. I mean, there's already standing water like 10 feet from people's RVs right here. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of water here. <laughs> Look at this. We were immediately a little concerned because we saw houses on stilts here. We even called beforehand and asked if this flooded. Ah. See water? Yeah, there's lots of water, buddy. Lots of water. So she said the water is already up a foot and we should expect it to go up. This is a very broad range. One to five more feet. <laughs> she's not too worried about it she said they're shutting down the property and none of them have to come in so <laughs> she said there's an emergency number and there will be other people on site here if we have problems but the facility is closed tomorrow well did they give us a water view site or oh, we'll have a water view <laughs> don't you worry about that oh that looks tight So when you check in, you get a swag bag. Yeah. It comes with a floaty. <laughs> with a flotation device. A flotation device. <laughs> what have we done? I've been scanning the sky for loose limbs. We are definitely under trees. That one's definitely dead. But the main one that concerns me, and Marissa's already taken a picture of it, you can see it's not connected. It's totally dead and it's just laying there, ready to get blown off. Is this one right here. That thing is ready to go. It's looks like a good 14 to 16 feet, so. <sighs> so everybody got to talk in. We went over the plan, which is basically to go to Greenville and find a parking lot. <laughs> if it gets really bad, it's supposed to start raining tonight. I think we'll know a lot about it tomorrow morning. But, you know what? My original plan was we were gonna hop in the truck if we had to, and I, I can't leave it here. So I went ahead and hooked up just in case. You never know. Might as well. Just making the best of a kind of crazy situation. We're already hooked up. All we gotta do is get the slides in and get the jacks up. So a question that makes total sense to ask in all this is why would you not just head north <laughs> instead of heading south toward the hurricane? Well, first of all, we're not technically heading straight toward the hurricane. The hurricane's kind of hooking inland and we're still to the east side of that and yet we're not on the coast so we definitely could have headed north however it's not because of the direction of the hurricane and the rain and the wind really we can't go two hours north we probably couldn't go four hours north if we're going to go north we'd probably go six to ten hours north and in that case we might be 12 to 20 hours out of the way because we have to come right back south because we're going to the lippert rally we have our own event we know we're coming south and so to us we know we're not heading straight into the hurricane we're just going to be dealing with for the most part, maybe some slight wind. And really the big threat of what we're gonna be dealing with is flooding. Uh -huh. I've been up since about four o'clock this morning when the rain really started in this area. I've been doing a walk around. Really things probably aren't gonna get bad here until you know this afternoon and tonight, because that's when the water will have time to rise. Um, the winds, I don't think will be super bad, but it's just the flooding, the potential flooding that I'm concerned about. So I've been doing a walk, like trying to walk our exact path of getting out of here. The biggest concern is actually not this body of water, I don't think, because this is just a pond. It's these canals or water. There's a, there's a water canal over here on the other side of those RVs, and then it sort of wraps around. You can see that truck over there with the water over here too. So my concern is we're kind of basically surrounded by this water. And if it does rise enough to get out of this river, like it can't be good. It can't be a good situation. So we're really watching what's going on figuring out our evacuation route and like watching the water level. Right now it's about where it was yesterday. It hasn't risen yet. Don't feel real good about it. <laughs> uh, kind of frustrated because we left and we could have picked anywhere and we apparently picked somewhere that could flood. Well, 
here is what you're taking. We do have the rain kind of moving through parts of the Midlands right now. It's, it's a smart case one, Hensley. It's a trail of destruction in its wake. Ian also carried life-threatening and record storm surge. Yep. We're getting out of here. Just not. Walk the exit route out of here and uh, the road to get out of here is directly right next to the river. So honestly, if we waited until we watched and saw the river flooding, we would have a hard time getting out because the worst flooding is gonna be on the road that's right next to the river. We're gonna go stay the night somewhere for tonight. Probably just a Walmart parking lot or something like that. We'll call the park, see what the status is, if everything's okay. We'll come back once everything feels good to go. Coming down, starting to uh, get a swimming pool out there. I think we're making the call to head out. It's a lot of water and we will be trapped once this lake starts flooding here. And we've talked with Stuart and Lindsay. I mean, they're wanting to head out too. So I think we're, we're in this together. this is a good call we've been watching the updates of the storms today and like my heart goes out to everyone I mean it's just heartbreaking it's been quite the day so my heart just so goes out to those who have lost everything and the we gotta fact, move a couple of times it's no big deal yeah I mean I think that's what I'm trying to say is I've just put it in perspective that I mean this isn't the ideal situation I know a lot of y'all worry about weather and what to do but it's actually an advantage that our house is on wheels and if we feel we need to go, we can go. So I think we're making the right call. I can already see with the water. It's like within six inches probably coming over this road uh, on both sides. So that spot we just passed where the houses are on stilts, the houses are on stilts. <laughs> we wouldn't be able to get out of there possibly. I don't know what's the other direction. I don't want to think about it. I don't know the area. I think being stuck and not get being able to get out is a huge concern. This is a life of <laughs> options. So the same thing yes. that makes it great that we can move around, she was saying, is the same thing that we don't want to be stuck because we're not built the same way a house is. Mm -hmm. So you've got, to, you've got to make the most of the fact that you're mobile. Another advantage of this lifestyle is, they said on the news, there's what 2.9 million people out of power right now but that's definitely something that's a peace of mind for us that we will be able you know we have our our battleborn lithium batteries we we're going to be able to have power and water definitely a pro that we always have with us no matter options 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 so wet and cold you want to cry <laughs> like it's that kind of wet and cold this jacket is not fun of my rain boots but they come in handy oh, good gracious all right girls go in all honesty this doesn't look like it but this feels like a much better situation than what we had before number one not in a floodplain number two well, we do have some train noise next to us, but we'll take it. But number two, there is some debris in a random shopping cart over here, but we do not have, for the most part, leaves or limbs right over our rig anymore. We hopefully don't have to worry about limbs falling on the rig if the wind really picks up. Oh, this is Hensley's last pair of rain boots. Hey, I don't know if those need to come off right there. Let's, oh, let's see here. Come on here. Walmart. Come on here and take them off over here. We'll go in a little bit, baby. We gotta wait for the rain to stop. This is the last size <laughs> for her. And yeah, she has a hard time getting them off now. They're so small, but we don't want to give them up, do we? No. <laughs> Is it right behind us? Where's it at? I can hear it. It's got to be behind these trees. There oh, it it's right there. It's literally. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. The train is right there. I did not know that. <laughs> do they run all night? 
right? Stuart said we attract trains. We do attract trains. They follow us everywhere we go. <laughs> JJ, JJ, what's the matter? I'm scared. Are you scared of the storm? Yeah, I don't like it. You don't like the storm? I don't like the storm. That's too scary. The storm's scary? Yeah. Mommy and Daddy got you, okay? They got you. The RV life already has a lot of decisions. <laughs> A lot of stress at times. You're moving around, you're making plans, you're making reservations. We already moved some stuff around. And then you throw storms into the mix. And it's not just the impact it has on you as a parent or even like your marriage or your family as a whole. Like kids have emotions as well and kids feel things as well. Let's let's get a distraction going. You guys ready to? Hence like closed all the Oh wow, you made it up. Shades. It's like a movie, uh. <laughs> I did not suggest you notice the storm. Oh, well, let's go see. Oh, buddy, don't do the pouty face. Is he doing the lip? I can't take the lip. The don't lip. Get... He uh, wins us over with the pouty lip. It's <laughs> professional level. <laughs> Stewart's on the roof during the storm. I'm not sure. Oh my goodness, he's gonna get blown off of that thing. I saw he had the tape out. So he's he's sealing something. They must have a leak. Yeah, my mom's checking on me. Hey, mom. Hey. You guys okay? We're chilling in a in a Walmart parking lot. How are you? Well, we left our first campground because it was on the ocean pretty much. Didn't feel safe. Wow. So then we came to a second campground that we thought was okay. And turns out it's in a floodplain. So we now left that campground. Oh so now we're in our third spot, which is a Walmart parking lot. And I'm watching our friend Stuart on top of his Airstream trying to fix something. I need to probably check and see what he's doing. Lindsay said they have a leak and oh. he's trying to fix it because it's stressing. <laughs> still just like mind-blowing to me that after all we've been through and all the running around and trying to find a safe place to park it's like we're still sitting here in a Walmart parking lot doing our life in our home. How's the French toast, Hensley? It's good. You only have one answer when I ask you that. You say, we. Oui. Actually, how do, you, how do you say that's good in French? <laughs> I don't know either. Um, French toast isn't French. Oh, my bad. Okay, we're packing up. So we called the campground. Um, they said it did flood, uh, but not severely. So, but they said if you had a shed or you had a low lying RV, it could have gotten in your bay possibly. So I don't know if that means probably one to three feet is my guess, which one to three feet would have likely been enough because we have a Z frame on the front, likely been enough where the water would have gotten underneath our front here. But for like Stuart Lindsay with the Airstream, I mean, three feet of flooding and, and I mean, it's in the rig. So I think we made the right call. And if nothing else, I slept pretty well last night actually. So I know if I'd been back at that campground, I would not have slept a wink. So the extra two hours is gonna take us to come out here and go back. I would have stayed up all night watching the flood levels and the water in the area. I don't know, we're gonna go back and take a look firsthand at what the campground looks like. They said it's okay to come back. No doubt in my mind, we made, we made the right call getting out of there, playing it safe and coming here. It's a horrible, horrible. Right. Here, let's take a, a picture of a picture of a picture. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be video of a picture of a picture. But you get the idea. Well, I mean, the lady next to us said there was about two feet. They said a dike burst, and then like the whole campground basically had a foot plus of water, anywhere from one to three feet. And right in this area, it was two to three feet. Is what we had here. I, I think the back would have been okay. But look at that. Look how low our front is. Like the chances of it getting into that Z frame were pretty good. So this fire pit was not visible. <laughs> that fire so, pit was not so visible. That fire pit was underwater. That was underwater. That, the so whole that, fire that's pit. probably the the best. Okay. Best show of. Well, where, where yeah, it your been. airstream totally would have had water in the bottom of it. Oh, it would have been bad. You find a puddle, buddy? Yeah, it's, it's 
long this is this bus? Yeah, I think you're good to go on the puddles for a while. We're just so grateful and thankful and blessed that we are home and we're safe. But I know that it did not work out that way for a lot of people. And um, it's just heartbreaking that so many people have lost everything, their homes, their lives, family. If you feel called to to help these people that are in need, we'll put a link below to Samaritan's Purse. We want to keep this video in context. Uh, so next week, don't be surprised when we're hopping back over to Elkhart and heading toward Pittsburgh for that video. And if you do want more storm-related footage from LJMJ, several years ago, we were in the Airstream in Colorado in a hailstorm, uh, and we had to make a run for it to the bathroom for a concrete facility. <laughs> Here's, let's go. So if you want to check that video out, I will link to that. We love you guys so much. We appreciate your thoughts and prayers, and we're going to continue to keep all of you in our thoughts and prayers as well. And that was our journey for this week. Until next time, we'll catch you guys later. Yeah.